My next guest is Brendan O'Neill, the chief political reporter for Spiked Online. Brendan, thank you for joining us. I spoke a little earlier in the program about the hypocrisy of the feminist movement in the aftermath of that groundbreaking New York Times investigation into sexual violence perpetrated by Hamas on October 7. Here in Australia, we've seen high profile feminists and activists suddenly change their positions on rape complaints and due process. It appears only when it comes to Jewish victims. What's been your response to the fallout of this piece? You know, I just think the response to the New York Times piece has been horrific and at the same time not particularly surprising. The way in which feminists and others on the left completely abandoned the women of Israel after they were raped, butchered, burnt alive by the fascists of Hamas, the way they abandoned them was just disgusting. Uh, you know, let's remind ourselves that it, it took UN women 57 days to make a comment about Hamas's sexual violence. And lots of other people, you know, feminists who have spent the past five years saying, believe women, believe all women, are now saying, don't believe women. In fact, they're saying, believe men. Even worse than that, they're saying, believe the fascists of Hamas when they say they didn't rape women, rather than believe in the women who said that they witnessed rape or were uh, themselves sexually violated. So we are witnessing the collapse of any claim to moral authority that Western feminists might once have had, and any claim to moral authority that the Western left once had. We now know that their principles, their so-called principles, do not apply to Jewish people, which, if you ask me, smacks of racism. I would have to agree with you as a Jewish woman myself. and But I have to say, we've seen so many hints of this over the years. It doesn't surprise me, sadly, either. Uh, a little bit more on this topic, I guess. Harvard University's Claudine Gay has resigned as president after facing mounting criticism over how she responded to anti-Semitism on campus. Here's a little reminder of that. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric, when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation, that is actionable conduct and we do take action. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard code of conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. Context, that has to be the term of this entire conflict. Look, she's also facing plagiarism allegations, but despite all of this, Harvard continued to throw their support behind her, saying they accepted her resignation with sorrow. The statement reads, while President Gay has acknowledged missteps and has taken responsibility for them, it is also true that she has shown remarkable resilience in the face of deeply personal and sustained attacks. While some of this has played out in the public domain, much of it has taken the form of repugnant and in some cases racist vitriol directed at her through disgraceful emails and phone calls. We condemn such attacks in the strongest possible terms. Brendan, she's still being painted as a victim. It's just awful. You know, of course, if she has received any personal racist abuse from people, that's terrible. We can all agree that that's terrible. But to blame her downfall on racism is completely ridiculous. Her downfall is to the, is down to the fact that she committed the cardinal sin of academia, which is plagiarism. There were almost 50 instances where she appears to have plagiarised other people. And also, as you've just shown, that congressional hearing where she just completely failed to make the case for keeping Jewish students safe on campus. That was really an indictment of her leadership. You know, the idea that Claudine Gay is a free speech warrior to such an extent that she would defend the right of people to call for a holocaust of the Jews is a complete fantasy. This is a woman who has been involved in cases of cancel culture, who has tried to get people cancelled for their views. Harvard University, under her leadership, came last in a free speech university rankings in America. It came last in the list. You know, universities in America are, are, are overrun with woke censorship. If you call a trans woman a man, you'll be cancelled. If you criticise any aspect of the Black Lives Matter ideology, you'll be cancelled. And yet, if you call for the destruction of every Jewish person on earth, apparently that's a free speech issue. That's something you're allowed to do. Once again, we can see the absolutely staggering double standards of the so-called uh, principled moral left. And... 
again, it's hard to explain it without call using the words anti-Semitism and without wondering whether there's a racist element to this. I've never seen such a commitment of free speech by these types before all of this. But look, speaking of wokery, let's talk about New Year's Eve because we had our own controversy here in Sydney after our national broadcaster was criticised for politicising its fireworks coverage with an Indigenous rap performance. But it seems there was a similar experience in London. Oh, it was terrible. We had uh, Sadiq Khan, uh, the mayor of Woke, uh, London's kind of pipsqueak dictator, as some of us like to refer to him. He turned the fireworks display into basically a moral lecture to the city and to the whole nation, really. They there were huge voiceovers from the sky, like the you know the gods of woke thundering down on the little people, telling us about the wonders of immigration, the wonders of gay marriage, how how brilliant the national health service is, uh, the, the, how great it is to be a diverse city. It was just this hectoring lecture to the little people when we wanted to just celebrate the new year. And what it really showed to me is just how ubiquitous wokeness has become. There really is no escaping this. Even, you know, adverts on TV, uh, movies, the education system, politics, and now even the fireworks display on New Year's Eve, everything has to come wrapped up in this woke ideology. I think people are getting sick of being constantly beaten over the head with this ideology. And we just want a few a few days off from being lectured to by people like Sadiq Khan. Oh, wouldn't that be nice, a little break from it all, but they just can't let it happen. Now, I can't let you go without talking about Harry and Meghan. 2023 was a bit of a shocker for the couple, to say the least. There was, of course, Prince Harry's memoir and the Netflix documentary, among so many other examples. What do you think 2024 will bring for the couple? Well, it's hard to tell, but, you know, lots of people are saying that 2023 seemed to be their annus horribilis, to use a, a, a phrase that the Queen once used. And I think that's right. You know, they had some success. The Netflix documentary did OK. Harry won part of his legal trial against the press here, which I think is a very worrying attack on, on freedom of the press. Uh, but, you know, their, their uh, podcast has bombed and Harry's book shocked a lot of people with the way in which it reveals so much about the private life of Prince William and, and King Charles and Camilla and lots of other people. I think people are sick and tired of this whining celebrity couple from California. You know, we are going through a cost of living crisis, an energy crisis. There are wars taking place. The last thing we need to hear is this woe is me act from literal royals who live it up in mansions in California. People are sick of their whining, their narcissism, their self-pity. What we want from royals is a bit of, you know, public duty, a sense of loyalty, a sense of respect for the country. And we've never got that from Harry and Meghan. Yeah, so right. Uh, but we are not sick of sending them up here on this programme. Thank you so <laughs> much, Brendan O'Neill. Appreciate your time.